Okay. So queries, this is how we get things out of the database. Okay. So we call that database interrogation. It's got a fancy name. It means getting data out of the database or sorting it so that we can show it or use it or analyze it somehow. We don't want the whole database because some of these things are really big. Okay, we just want the bits that we want. Um, in Microsoft Access, there's a very simple system. Okay, it's called the query system. Okay, and there's a wizard to set them up. You all understand what I mean by wizard? Leo, do you understand what a wizard is, yeah? What's a wizard for Leo's benefit? Yeah? It, does it install, it installs something for you and tells you where everything's being installed? Yeah, it basically makes life a lot easier. So people who don't know what they're doing gives you a step-by-step -step guide. So there's a query wizard. It makes it very, very simple to make a query inside Microsoft Access. Okay? What that's doing is actually hiding from you, as all wizards are, it's hiding from you what's really going on. Okay? What's really happening is, you, you know how you use App Inventor as a drag and drop interface? That wizard is basically setting up what we call SQL code. Okay? SQL stands for Structured Query Language. So of course, behind the scenes, there's a program that drives it all. And what you've got to learn today, the main thing that I want you to learn today, is how structured query language works. Okay, it's like a language, it's nowhere near as complicated as the languages that you've learned. And if you look on those sheets of paper that you've now got, okay, that's the kind of thing that you'd be asked to interpret. Now, if you've got a logical mind, you'll just look at that straight away and know what it's talking about. Okay, so we're going to look at some examples of that. And don't worry, by the end of the lesson, everybody's going to get it. Remember, I've done this more times than you. Okay, everybody turns up, hasn't got a clue, and by the end, it all makes sense. It's not something to fear. It's not like learning Visual Basic from scratch. Okay, it's fairly self-explanatory. Okay, you will learn a lot more about hiding complexity if you stay on to A level because it's a big part of computer science theory. We want to hide complexity from people so that they can use, they can do stuff that they wouldn't normally be able to do themselves. That's what Windows does. Okay. Now, as well as queries, you can have reports. They're actually basically the same thing. Okay. A report is just a nice looking version of it. Okay. All you've done is you've done the query exactly the way you would have done it before, but you've presented the results the way that you want to present them. Okay? So instead of just being in a table, looking like a spreadsheet, you can actually present them any way you like. So one very good example, you know, you might present it as a letter. How are your school reports presented? You get a table, which is a little bit confusing, and then what do you get? A load of comments at the bottom, and it's sort of like table comments. Yeah, table comments. Do you think that's how it looks inside the ISAMS database? What do you think you would look like in the ISAMS database? Drop down menus, yeah. Actually, your details sitting in the database, how would they look? Yeah, and what would you be in the spreadsheet? Mm-hmm. Number of what? A row. A row. You're a record, aren't you? Yeah, to that database, you're just a record. To us, of course, you know, you're a beautiful, amazing life form. Okay? But that, to that database, you're just a row of information. Okay? I would imagine that if we just printed out your row and dished it out to your parents, they wouldn't be too happy with that. Okay, it wouldn't look very nice. We'd need an extremely long piece of paper, okay? or they'd need a magnifying glass to read it. All right, So we don't do that. What we do is we say, no, I don't just want the table printing out for uh, Taylor Mellors. I want the name to go there. I want the attitude grades to go downwards like that. And then I want the comment bit to go there. 
I also want to put his form in the middle so we can give it to the right form tutor and we want the year on there as well so that we can organise everything. Okay, so instead of being in a row, it's in a nice report format. But don't be fooled, they're both doing the same thing, it's just one presents it more nicely. They can both be done through wizards in Microsoft Access. You don't know how, you don't need to know how to do it, okay, as long as you're aware of what it is. They're both coded using this SQL behind the scenes. So we're going to have a look at that in a minute. Just to give you a side-by-side -side comparison, queries versus reports, in a query, that's what a query would look like. It would look just like a Microsoft Access table. Okay. What do you think that query has been sorted or searched by? Any ideas? I know it's a wee bit small. Is it last name? You think it's been sorted by last names? No. What's that? Date created. Good lad. Yep. Yeah. If you look at the date created, if you've got good eyesight, mm -hmm. you'll see that every single one was created on the 13th of the 6th, 2014. So unless that's just a very lucky screenshot, it looks like somebody's done a search, which is a type of query, for the date 13th of June, 2014. How's it sorted? Westerman? Time they were created. Uh, nope. Because 3 pm is not before 9 pm. Uh, well, it is before 9 pm, but sorry. Uh, 9 pm is before 9 and 9, isn't it? So, nope, it's not by that. The, the oh, is that the current time? Created yeah, by... no, sorry, you're right. That's the current time, isn't it? So that's when you put your next record in, that's what it's going to get. But yeah, it is sort of by time created. Yeah, so that's a query. We've searched on the date created and we've sorted it by the time created, effectively. This is what a report looks like. The information has been laid out the way the user wants to lay it out. Okay, so it looks kind of nice. Is there any other information other than a school report where you think, oh, that's a report coming out of a database? Is there anything that you get from time to time that looks like this? Bank statement. A bank statement, absolutely. You've actually you, you've, you've gone one better than I thought there, James. You've gone for something out of school. Uh, but a bank statement absolutely is an extract from a database in a report format. Can you ever notice that your bank statement looks exactly the same? That's because the bank designed it and then all they do is click run and it just does it. It does the same thing every time. Anything that you get within school that looks a bit like that reminds me of something that I dish out to my form all the time. Oh, the school, bill. school bill, yes. Yeah, that happens once a year though, doesn't it? Yeah. School well, report we've done. Everything. There's something that I see that looks like this that people get all the time. Not so much in year 11, funnily enough, but yeah. Overdue library books. Okay. The, the library database will have a query in it that says, if this book is loaned and the return date is less then today's date, fill out all the details on a letter like this. So every day the librarians will just click run overdue report and they'll just print them off. Sorry to disappoint you, but the ladies don't sit there and type that out specially for you. Okay? If they did, how would we know that they had? You'd get mistakes. Okay? And that's no reflection on the uh, librarians who are doing an excellent job. Okay, it's just when a human does something, there's tiny variations and mistakes. Okay, your overdue library reports, I never see a mistake or something that's out of line, it's always spot on, so I can tell this has been extracted from a database. Okay, so you can do that through wizards, and I'm not going to insult your intelligence by taking you through the wizard. Okay, there's examples on the internet, you can have a play with them if you want, so I'm going to go straight to the SQL because we're a little bit slow behind. Okay. 
So I'm going to show you a video. And this is all on the internet, so you can find it any time you like. There's the crazy little introduction to databases, which it looks like maybe some of you need to watch again. That's the PowerPoint that I'm going through right now, which also contains last lesson stuff. There's loads of stuff that I haven't even talked about that is quite useful. And there's a couple of examples. Yes. Don't worry. Oh. Thank you. You do need to see what I'm talking about, don't you? So this is Microsoft. Thing. Take your PC over. I've got to be careful what I say about Microsoft while I'm on film, but Shoot. it's still got hold of my PC. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, the web page there, you've got the video I showed you last time. Today's PowerPoint. An info sheet in case you don't like the way I say things. Okay, a few tasks to test yourself, and the example database that I went through last time. Okay. What I want to show you now, again, there's another video in case you don't like this one. But I'm going to use this one. Okay. Try to ignore the condescending start. Right. What do you think that does? James, uh, store the actor's first name, last name, and age. Anything else? Let's do order. Do you mean this number here? Yeah. Yeah. That's ID. that's their ID. Yeah. So all it does is it puts these four records into a table called. Actor info. Watch. Any questions on that? So that is how you use SQL to put things in to a database. You use the insert command. Yeah, insert, put in. All you do is tell it where to insert it, which table it's going in, and what values you want inserted. All right, separate fields by commas. Select query. Right, let's just look at that again. See there, it says select star from actor info. We know that there is no star because we've seen, we've seen the contents of this table actor info. So what do you think star might signify? Have a guess before I show you. Questerman? Could it be their name? Could be, yeah. Probably something a bit more. Questerman again? Would it be the number they were stored in? Mm, could be. Leo, any ideas? Same idea, okay? Watch. What does star mean? The register, the whole thing. Everything. Star means get me everything. That's why all he did, he just changed the table to the query. Because it means get me everything. And what do you think that does? Taylor? Gets the ID in total films for each of the actors. Each of the actors? Yeah. yeah, each of the actors because it it's not said value, so it's not said get me this one, it's just said select actor ID in total films from actor info. See, told you you'd like it. Simple, yeah? So insert, put things in, select, show just what you've asked it to select. What do you think update does? Update the table. 
Okay, go on then, what does update mean? Right, refresh it. Mm, with what? Uh, new data. So we're going to edit it, in other words. <laughs> Yes, Leo. Okay. Do any of you remember who Act One was? Shadows. That's not part of the part of the work. You've seen how sad you are. There you go, so Leonardo DiCaprio has been found, and as Leo said, update completed. Finn, would you like to guess what the delete query does? So any actor uh, record that's got more than 70 films might disappear. So Jack Nicholson, getting on a bit now, I think he's stopped making films. Who's Jack Nicholson? Oh dear. He was the first Joker, he was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, he was in The Shining. Come on. Is he the, it's Johnny no, not much here, you know. Another example of delete. Okay. A few extras. Okay, that's not the correct syntax. So, just like VB, it is actually a programming language, it's what we call a fourth generation programming language. Okay, uh, so it has syntax. However, you don't need to worry about the syntax too much for two reasons. One, it's quite simple and you get used to it very quickly. And two, 75% of the questions that the exam board have asked so far, they've given you the SQL and ask you to work out what to do with it. And that's exactly what they've done in this question sheet here. Okay, so if you turn it uh, over from the first page, you're given a couple of tables of data. Okay, and then you're asked a question where they've provided with the, US, with the SQL and all you have to do is tick a box. Okay, similarly, on the other side, all you have to do is interpret that SQL, okay? And it works exactly the way that you think it's going to work, okay? So, tell you what, why don't you take five minutes to look at that, see if you can answer them, and then we'll talk about it as a class, okay? Take five minutes on it. Talk amongst yourselves if you need to, all right?